What's up guys and gals, Caleb here. Today we're going to talk about the game for Sega Genesis, Marble Madness. Check it out. Marble Madness is a difficult puzzle game originally designed by Mark Cerny and published by Atari Games in 1984 for the arcades. In the arcade, it used a trackball to navigate your marble through a series of perilous obstacle courses. The game was ported on numerous systems, but for this review, we look at the Sega Genesis port, published by the dreaded Electronic Arts. And this is back when Electronic Arts actually made good games. They did things other than just like sports games and shooters. The gameplay is simple in concept. Get from the start of the level to the end as fast as possible. Once through the first level, you are promptly graded by an actual challenge. Level 2 steps up its deadly game with evil black balls. Steep inclines that if not timed correct can lead to a pit of death or at least stunned, allowing yourself to be open to being killed in other ways. You have to tightly and efficiently avoid all the obstacles and choose the quickest path to the end. Or you'll run out of time and the level ends. The graphical stylings of this game are pretty intriguing and geometrically pleasing to look at. It's a clean game with decent graphics. I don't really see a need to improve the graphics in any way. I think the graphics kind of cover what you're doing here. As you can see, there are two status bars there at the top. One is obviously your time, the other is your points. So I guess if you don't get to the end of the level, some small consolation is, hey, look at my high score here. And in an arcade scenario, that actually mattered because you know not everybody could just pump out unlimited quarters to play this game efficiently. So they had to go home with something, something to show for their time and their effort. What's interesting about this game is, again, it was originally designed for a trackball, but I felt like it actually translated pretty well to a D-pad on the Sega Genesis. It's when you get to the third level, that's when you know something's off in this game. Something starts to really grate at your nerves. Everything about the game seems fine. The graphics, the gameplay. It's a fun game to play, but there's something just really starting to grate at me. It's the music. Is that even music? It's so stressful, so grating, so annoying to hear, so painful to my ears. It's like my ears are bleeding from the inside. It's, oh my god! Oh my god. Holy crap, the music is freaking painful in this game. Oh. Marble Madness is a great game. This is just not the best port, and mainly because the music is absolutely terrible, and the collision detection isn't really the greatest either. The isometric view doesn't bother me at all. I actually enjoy it. Again, I love the art style of this game, and the music is okay in most of this port. It's the instruments that they chose to use that make it so freaking painful for your ears. But this game is still inexpensive, albeit a little bit rare, and I would definitely suggest that you get the Nintendo counterpart port of this game, which was actually developed and published by Rare. Rare is a great company. I'm sure you guys are familiar. They made Banjo-Kazooie, Killer Instinct, all kinds of famous classic games and everybody absolutely blows their load over. So pick up Marble Madness if you see it. It's a fun, challenging game. I think it's like four or five levels. Get as far as you can. Enjoy the game. I would recommend it. I would give this game, not the port, the game. For a puzzle game, seven out of 10 because it's a fun game. It's got a few weaknesses as far as, you know, it's it's, it's hard. The music's a bit iffy. Um, the concept is a bit short-lived as far as there's not really that many levels. It was supposed to get a sequel that never came out. It's a fun little game. Pick it up. Marble Madness, Sega Genesis. Thanks for watching Game Glyph and don't forget to subscribe.